All right. Another episode of 10 Minutes of Pillow Talk, this time with Tom <laughs> Evans, uh, another Arnold's rookie, and this is your first pro competition. Yes. You're pumped. Very excited. Yeah. You nervous? Oh, yeah. Right. Just enough to keep me humble and just be ready to put everything out on the line. Let's let's talk about your previous athletic background, because this is my favorite bit about you. Yeah. Tell us about it. So I... Uh, College football player, mm-hmm. um, you know, pursued the NFL for a good bit afterwards. Um, was on the Green Bay Packers for a short period of time. Do you know I love them? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I noticed that you always get that hat on. Yeah, uh, I threw actually threw it in the garbage because too many people were talking about them when I was wearing the hat. Like, <laughs> well, fair I enough. I don't care what team you cheer for. Um, and you know, was kind of um, thought I had an opportunity to make it. Um, was pretty close, didn't end up working out. Still kind of pursued it um, for a little while after while I was starting my strength conditioning career yeah. as a coach. Um, and, you know, kind of frustrating end for me for it. And then after that, I was uh, about the same time Born Strong was on Netflix. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of where we cycled into Strongman. I started watching that and I'm like, well, yeah, I think I could do that. And now we're here. Sit so, in the bed in the hotel room in Columbus. It's crazy lucky. <laughs> <laughs> um, when were you at the Packers? It was the summer of 17. So like okay. right after draft pickup and then cut at the last round. Oh, uh, right. Okay. Okay. And now you do SNC for Delaware? Yep. Cool. University of Delaware. work with their football team and their men's and women's lacrosse team. Yeah, awesome. And that's that's been your full-time gig for a while? Yes. Yeah. It's So I, I kind of went there at... Um, Right after I was cut, started as a volunteer and uh, kind of worked my way up there. So um, um, they're very supportive of my training. I get to train at where I work. It kind yeah. of make, works great with the schedule. It makes it pretty easy for me. Yeah, of course, of course. And in terms of in terms of where you want your career to go, do you want it to go strongman side? Or do you want it to go S and C side? I I have definitely flirted with the idea of both. Um, I really enjoy what I do as a strongman. I really enjoy what I do as a strength coach. I know the time window for a strongman is more limited. Um, and I don't feel like I'm in a position where I would have to step away from strength and conditioning. I uh, maybe not be able to progress it as much. Um, but right now I don't feel that it's holding anything back in my strongman career. If anything, it's helping me because I have more access to some resources I may not have otherwise. Yeah, of course. Of course. Now, if you were, if we we'll take a step back and just in the SNC world, because that's that's my background in part as well. What do you think is the number one misunderstanding of most people when they train a strength sport? The the lack of recovery. I've talked to so many people, uh, guys guys of my you know level. I I just left, I guess, and uh, everybody's trying to train six days a week, twice a day not rehab properly, not looking at the full body picture and um, understanding the proper things needed to recover, to sleep, to hydrate, to feel properly. And they're just like, I'll just keep working harder and harder and harder. And I see it in football too. Yeah. Right? And then they just continually beat themselves up and without the recovery, they're, they're never looking at the full picture of it. Sure. Sure. Cool. Now, this is your first pro comp. Obviously, the goal is to be in it for some period of time. Yep. What would what would you say your strongman career would be successful if you did this? I've been contemplating that for a while. Um, I, I don't know if I have a set like I got to do this. I I like to think I have the ability to compete at world strongest man. I like to think I have the ability and and time to maybe you know podium at Arnold's or podium at a Shaw. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not going to be unreasonable <laughs> try to I'm going to the next couple of days give everything I freaking got and what happens happens so uh, I know I have to get some things I got to just keep progressing but um, and for me it's just kind of keep building forward I'm bad at the long term goal setting more of a short term goal and then as soon as I pick that one up it's right into the next one yeah right and obviously you still work with Dirks right yes correct so, so Dirks would obviously help with some of the longer term stuff absolutely awesome awesome Cool. What's well, one thing about Tom Evans that you think people don't know? I mean, they don't know much about you at all. Yeah. But would one thing you, that that you would like them to know about you that they'd like you you'd like them to take away? Um. I I used to be 
I am not able to do it anymore. My fun fact used to be a pretty avid fly fisherman. So I'm not able, oh, okay. to, I'm not able to golf or rotate or um, do any rotational sports or go on hikes much unless yeah. there's a fishing spot. But I grew up in uh, Western North Carolina. So we spent a lot of time fly fishing out on the, the rivers there. It's a pretty popular destination for it um, on the East Coast. Um, I used to be pretty good at it. It's been some time. I've lost some finesse as I've gained some strength. Yeah, yeah, um, of course. But, uh, What's the biggest fish you've caught on a fly fish? We always went after trout, and out in near Helena, Montana, we caught like a, about a two foot uh, brook. Yeah, trout. Right. yeah. Right. That, that was that was a fun fun fight on the fly. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you are pure. Like you're a mountain man. You are what you look like. You are. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, like I said, I grew up in uh, right next to the Smoky Mountain National Park, uh, right in North Carolina. Um, you know, I know people that that come straight out of the mountains, rolling down the hill. There was one one high school in my county. Uh, graduated in class of two hundred and fifty. Everybody knew each other, um, and I I went to um, knew a lot of people that never left their hometown. I'm one of the people that did, and it doesn't happen quite often. But uh, do go home and visit quite a bunch my mom my grandparents still live there so i go visit them as much as i can just mom and grandparents yes dad uh i have no idea really no idea wow yep so i guess i could find out but i never really wanted to bill Casmire. there you go bill Casmire. maybe where were you 20 <laughs> something <laughs> <laughs> where, where were you in 94 uh okay happy happy for one one uh controversial one what you got i have i had a feeling when all of the world's invites were going out and when some of the guys who had been to OSG and did well at OSG, when they started getting invited, I had a feeling that your name was going to come along. W what did you feel? I, if, if they're looking solely at o OSG performances, then those three guys earned it, there's no question. Yeah. And I think those three guys earned it regardless. I mean, those, that was a hefty comp and those guys smacked it, and you know I think they're deserving of that invite. Um, sure, I would like to maybe hop on a reserve spot or kind of tell them the end. I'm hoping um, you know good performance here can I open some eyes a little bit. Um, but it was to me it was like okay they they were really focusing on the OSG performance, which on on that on those days those guys crushed it. So I Do think you... they deserve it for sure. Do you agree to neglect the rest of the year what you did? Um, and let's just say, I know you don't want to say I should have had someone else's spot. <laughs> no, I'm, so, not, I'm not going to do that. I'm not, and I'm not implying yeah, that. No, I'm um, just saying if, if that caliber was taken, I feel like you've proven multiple times you're that caliber. Right. Um, yeah, well, I like to think there's more jump across the branches, you know, um, for a title like World Strongest Man, and I'm not... Um, you know, like I said, hopefully there's still maybe a spot I can get on a late reserve or something. Yeah. Um, depending on how this weekend goes, so. Yeah. Just got to prove I belong. And you know what? To prove you belong, you really, you only have to beat a couple of guys. Yeah. And you like, you start fitting in. And to beat a couple of guys, you basically need to have a couple of good events. Yep. So, what event, you say, what event, if you execute perfectly, could you win here? I feel pretty good about the wheel of pain. Yeah, feel yeah. I think you uh, with with your background. What position did you play? Guard. Okay, so, so not not the best endurance wise, but certainly no, but the principles are well ingrained. Just push. Yeah. Um, yeah. You've been you've been grinding that sled hard. I'm yeah, Dirk's just been kicking my ass. Yeah. With that. Yeah. Um, no, it's been good. I feel confident. We've been working times well above a minute, so probably a minute's gonna feel really short. Yeah. On that yeah. day. Um, I feel, I feel, I'm not going to be arrogant enough to say a chance to win, but I do feel um, strong about the log. I think yeah. I got a shot to, you know, do some damage there, open some eyes. Is that right? I think so. I feel confident. What's... But I, you know, obviously uh, training with a steel log versus a one log is going to be a different feel, but. Well, it's a bit easier for most. Um, what's, what's your best training set? Uh, fit 430 numerous times. Um, pretty easy bar speed, not a maximum rep. I haven't really trained much above it. 
So you're doing singles? Yes. I'll tell you what, after Wheel of Pain, if you can pull up all right and you could you could get a double out. We talked Trey Bobby Luke. I think one of Trey Bobby Luke probably also hits two. You you could be tied for third in the event. That that that, that would be the hope, but there's a guy yeah. named Mitch that's pretty fucking pumped about his log lately though. So. That's what I hear. <laughs> I'm working hard. All right. Well, let's go. What's your favorite thing about your mom? This is the last question. Then you can go to bed. <laughs> Just so you guys know, this is incredibly late for me. I'm not used to staying up this late, which is why I sound terrible. And it's like 9.15 or something. Yeah, I'm a 4 a.m. wake up guy. 8 o'clock to bed. Come here. Answer the okay. last question. My mom's work ethic. You know, she, uh, you know, we grew up pretty much a single family, um, or single parent family, excuse me. Um, my mom has... Um, you know, my brother and sister as well. Uh, she went to school while we were, um, while I was in high school, when I went into college and we were kind of taking care of my brother and sister on our own more or less. Um, so I always admired her for that. And I'd like to think I, you know, took some of my work ethic from her. Um, she must be pretty proud of all the different stuff you've done. Yes, she's, uh, she's actually going to be here this week. Oh, hell so. yeah. I'm sure she'd love to meet you guys. Yeah. She's yeah, a big, awesome. uh, she's a really big Luke Stolman fan. Okay. Uh, maybe more so than me. Well, the purple Crocs, man. The purple Crocs at the Shaw, yeah. she won't let me forget it. She did. She overlooked she, the last place performance and loved the purple correct. Crocs. Exactly. <laughs> she's been trying to find me a pair of size 17 okay. purple Crocs ever since. Are you 17? 17. Oh, my goodness. Four with. You're a good swimmer. Not too dense. My wife's a swimmer. She tells me I'm shit. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, well, everyone, this is Tom Evans. This is Pillow Talk. And um, we'll see you next time. What are we doing here? No, no, no. Oh. It's right, right here. What? What? Right here. Oh, there you go, buddy. <laughs> <laughs>